Howdy! My new bandsaw. I just finished it. It's uh, complete and ready for use. Um, it works really well. I'd like to go over a couple of the uh, features that I, I built into this. Uh, the frame is metal and most of the other parts are wood. The cover is all wood, uh, the table is all wood, and uh, the back cover, which I'll show later, uh, is uh, wood also. I'm going to open it up now. This uh, part down here is actually the dust collection box. Um, I made a little clip here to hold it in. It collects the dust from the saw. You put it back and just click it in. Light, it's made out of quarter inch plywood. Um, I painted it blue because I had some blue paint. And I thought it was a nice contrasting color to the white and the black and the natural wood. I did some cutting and that's the sawdust that came out. Take that off and then uh, open this this um, catch. You can see the the blade guy actually stays with the with the door so that it's uh, completely out of the way when the when the door opens up. And you can see the wheel blade guy, the upper blade guy, lower blade guys down here uh, to get at the blade. Guy underneath, I made the table a little bit differently than a standard bandsaw. You would take this part off, this whole corner section um, comes off. It's got a thumb screw here to hold the front of the line, get this bolted out. And to loosen this one back here, I slide this part right out. Slides into a slot right here. Line it up properly. That. So that allows me to access the blade guide under here. Now, what's different about this uh, uh, blade guide system is that I tried something a little bit different here. I've used um, the ultra high molecular weight plastic that uh, you can buy for it's guide bars for it's used for guide bars for uh, for shop jigs that would ride in a slot on a table saw or whatever um, I just cut it into short pieces and clamped it in here this blade guide is made of steel that I welded up and it works really well Here's the material here. Uh, you get uh, it's uh, three eighths of an inch thick and three quarters of an inch long, wide, and this was 24 inches long. Uh, something like five bucks from Lee Valley. So I use that <clears throat> for the upper and the lower, and the thrust bearings are just uh, inch and a quarter bearings uh, that the blade rides against. The cover opens in one piece. Completely. It's uh, hinged on the frame with three uh, butt hinges. The blade, the upper blade guide is easy to adjust. With this thumb screw right here, you loosen that up and then you can lower it down or raise it up. It'll go up as high as, gives me 12 inches of resaw capacity exactly between the table and the bottom of the, the blade guide. Um, I don't anticipate having to cut something 12 inches thick, but you never know. The tension adjustment on this saw is uh, is not on the top like most band saws. Uh, the motor assembly and lower wheel raise up and down to uh, adjust the tension on the blade. I thought this was a better way of doing it because it makes the, the upper wheel mount more rigid and also takes advantage of the, the motor weight to help tension the blade. Um, when it's in operation, 
not a lot of stuff that else goes down the bottom there. It's unavoidable to get all of it out, but quite a bit of it does get caught by the dust collection box here. The um, dust collection box goes on, hold the side in. The bottom of it hooks around the leg, the bottom leg, and then the top just clicks in. This is a, just a piece of wood that's like a spring uh, with a clip on the end here. Pull it up, take the box out, leave it alone to push it in. Uh, I don't expect that I'll have to change the blade in this very often. This, this saw is made uh, just primarily for resawing and uh, the occasional rip cut, whatever I want to do. Maybe I want to rip some thin strips and this would be the best thing for it. The table itself doesn't tilt. I thought that uh, if I want anything to be cut on an angle, I can easily make a jig to angle it down to, uh, to make that cut. Here's the upper blade guide. So you can see the thrust bearing is adjustable back and forth. Here's the upper mechanism for the for the blade guide. It has two clamps. These are made out of uh, solid maple. This one is split to allow it to tighten around this one and a quarter inch pipe and has a has a wing nut. The upper one is uh, solid and it just guides the it up and down. Uh, this is the crank for the for the uh, upper wheel tracking. Uh, turning it this way uh, tracks the blade back. Turning it that way tracks the blade ahead. Right now it's set up for this. It doesn't really require a lot of tracking because the, the, the wheels have a, a crown on them. Taking off the table involves taking off this wing nut that I had here and the carriage bolt. Here's a close-up of that. Um, the um, wing nut is uh, homemade. Uh, the top of this the table, by the way, uh, I might as well talk about this now. The table is uh, half-inch Baltic birch plywood and uh, with uh, three-quarter inch solid maple on the edge here. You can see I got a, a pretty good looking piece of maple right here. Um, I wanted to keep the table thin to maximize the depth of cut it's not really that big of a deal, but <clears throat> and then you loosen this uh, thumb wheel right here, and you can pull the table, this corner of the table out, and you can see the slot that it fits in to hold it uh, level with the top of the table. And you can look inside here and see the arrangement for the lower blade guide. It has the uh, the uh, ultra high molecular weight plastic uh, guide blocks again and underneath you can't really see it is another thrust bearing very similar well exactly the same as that one up there um, underneath and I'm gonna open it up to get a better look at this here's the dust collection box uh, to remove that you pull up on the you pull you just push up on this and it'll come out I gotta put the camera down push up on that and then it'll come out and you can put a lot you can get a lot of dust in this it's gonna hold a lot of dust um, looking at the dust collection box <clears throat> you can see it's got little ears on the bottom here that hook over the hook over the bottom leg uh, the legs have wheels on them. Uh, the back legs have the, this side legs has a wheel on wheels on them. That's to allow me to move it. I tip it back towards me and it rolls on the wheels. Right now it's uh, the weight is off the wheels. Opening up the cover, you can see the inside of the cover. Here's what I want to look at. Uh, it's the uh, it's the dust chute uh, for the blade. You can see just after some cutting, I've got uh, quite a bit of dust in there. Um, what I have here 
is a piece of rubber uh, that's cut to uh, try to uh, minimize the amount of dust that goes through to the bottom. As you can see that some does go through but not a whole lot. Most of it does get um, pushed out into the dust collection can. Here's the lower guide bearing right here and here's the uh, plastic blocks I guide it. <clears throat> Coming around the back uh, you can see the um, tension crank uh, by turning it uh, clockwise I reduce tension so that I can take the blade off like this built in there's a limiter um, it'll only go so far and then it'll stop and then the other way it's the same thing it'll only go so far put enough what I figure is the maximum amount of tension that I need on the blade and then it stops and it won't go any further the back the motor assembly is is completely enclosed I made a box from plywood that fits around the whole thing uh, this is going to keep um, this is going to keep the the motor assembly and all that free of dust free floating dust that normally uh, happens in a workshop when you're cutting with other tools uh, in the meantime some dust from the saw could get in I did make this cover easy to remove it's got three screws on this side three screws on that side and the cover just comes off here's a better look at the power switch and the part uh, it's just a normal light switch uh, the chances are that this will not last long the switch itself because uh, even though the switch is rated for 15 amps uh, the saw motor on startup uses uh, quite a bit more than that and so they'll burn out quite regularly maybe um, well it depends upon how, how often you use the saw um, here are the guards that I made. These are just uh, plywood blocks, quarter inch plywood blocks that I glued onto the face of the metal cover plate. The top is has got four coats of, of gloss polyurethane and uh, my experience with um, with my router table is that this will stand up to a lot of abuse. Um, the good thing is that once it starts to wear I can always take the top off. The top um, it's not glued on in any way it's uh, just put on with two bigger bolts and four smaller screws so I can take the top off and refinish it uh, at any time this uh, finish is sprayed on uh, I like spraying on the finish because uh, it's a lot quicker and you get a more even coat and plus you can get four coats on in one day actually in less than one day so it's a win-win <clears throat> here's a look at the table I, I took the time to make this uh, so that it's slotted to fit in here um, that keeps it deadly uh, flush in line and then has a, a zero clearance um, slot there for the blade so that when wow and it goes in there's uh, no room beside the blade for stuff to go down and that's it you can read more about this at ibuildit.ca